Now, the problem for beginners in Excel is there's just so many formatting options. You might end up creating a spreadsheet that looks a bit like this. I know I certainly did when I was first getting started with Excel. We'd much rather work with data that looks like this. And the truth is, this is exactly the same data. It's just the first spreadsheet. This shows our 17 beginner formatting errors in this video. I'm going to take you through these errors and crucially, the techniques and ideas you need to know to avoid them. That's what we're going to do in the next 15 minutes or so. But if we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. I'm an Excel content creator, lecturer, real world consultant. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. And before we get started, let me tell you quickly about our Excel data analysis crash course. The truth is, I don't use pivot tables. And in this free one hour course, I introduce to you the alternatives that I use to get data analysis done quickly and easily. Just pop your email in at the link below. The data analysis crash course will be sent to you. With that said, let's get into the download file. Make sure you download it and work along with me. Where are we going to start? Where are we going to start with the spreadsheet? Well, first, something conceptual. You can see we've got a title over here but it's over towards the right. We should be working from the top left. You can see on our sample spreadsheet, we've got our logo, our title, some important explanatory information in the top left. Don't work from the center because the center is different on different systems. Put the important stuff in the top left. This is idea one. Idea two, too many merged cells. It can be tempting to merge cells. Let me show you one problem that merged cells creates. I want to select a column. I'm going to hit Control and Spacebar on the Windows PC. I can't select a column because this whole row or a big part of it has been merged. So we're going to go ahead and unmerge that. So we can go to Home and then Merge and then Unmerge Cells. Uh, Alt H M U on the Windows PC, and now Control and Spacebar. Suddenly, I'm able to select a column. We're going to go ahead and just delete this information. Maybe we'll add it again later. Now, what do you notice about this sheet compared to this sheet? Well, there's a few differences, but we don't have the column headers or the row headers. Please, I really don't know if we can be friends if you're doing this because the user can't navigate the spreadsheet without seeing these. So don't disable them. I really recommend you don't do that. So if you go to view and then headings, you can see we've got our headings back. So make sure you retain those. What about zoom level? I highly, highly, highly recommend you always work at 100% zoom level. This is going to give you a sense of consistency across sheets and indeed across files. And you might say, well, Chris, I need to show more information. You've got to make some decisions. Make some decisions about what information you really need and then keep it at 100% zoom levels. And is this data actually readable? Just quite, just try reading across this data. Hmm. It's lacking readability because there's no horizontal borders and there's no grid lines. If you want to switch the grid lines off and you can go to view and show and then grid lines to toggle them on and off, they're going to come back on now then you have to put some horizontal borders in. We will do that uh, in a second. Okay, moving on. So I recommend you use a buffer column and a buffer row. Always do it in my files. It just leads the user's eye nicely into the data. So how would we do that? Well, we've got rid, rid of our merge cell at the top, control and space bar on the Windows PC, control, shift, and plus, and we've got our buffer column. And then, yeah, you could just go and select the a row header there, which we've made visible. And then you could go to inserts and you can see we've got a column in there. I'm going to control there because we've already got a few buffer columns at the top there. Right. Let's talk about colors. Colors in Excel, very contentious topic. For me, there's too many colors here. Colors, there needs to be a sense of a color scheme and less is more. If in doubt, less is more. So you're like, Chris, how do I create a color scheme? I struggle with this because I'm, I must be colorblind. I'm terrible with colors. You're going to take your company logo or your client's logo and then go to an online color picker, an online color picker. That's going to give you the RGB code or the hex code for the main color in the logo. You can then go to home, work through the colors and put it in more colors as a custom color here. You can see you've got your RGB codes 
and you've got your hex codes there. So you can begin to develop a color scheme and that, that color is going to be saved here. You can then go to an online color scheme generator and it will give you complementary colors and some contrast colors too. Note, I only use contrast colors very sparingly in this case, yellow. So that's how you can go about developing a color scheme. But if in doubt, just go for very little or even no colors at all. So I'm going to go control shift right, control shift down, select this data. How do we get rid of the shading? Just going to work through our paint box can contain the thing here. I'm going to go to no fill and feeling a bit more relaxed because we've managed to get rid of uh, those colors there. Another mistake is formatting to the end of the row in this case or to the end of the column. I'm going to go control shift down on the Windows PC, control shift down again. I can see we've formatted more than a million rows here. Now, it won't cause a problem immediately, but over time, this is going to like add file size and it's just not the way to do it. So control shift down on the Windows PC, alt H H N is going to remove that remove that background color. We've got a whole video on keyboard shortcuts, by the way, uh, that you can find. Uh, here's, here's the card, and it's in the video description below. Uh, if you don't want to use the shortcuts, what could we do? Um, so just select uh, these rows here. Going to go to home, and then, yeah, you can work through using the colors, or we could go to uh, clear, which I believe is here, and clear all. And already, I'm feeling a little uh, bit better here. Okay, now we do have the option to put background graphics here. I just want to flag this up. We don't need to put background graphics in. So if you go to page layout and then background, I'm recommending you don't use this option. I have never seen in my career, and please tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, a good application of a background logo in a spreadsheet. That beautiful, white, clear, canvas it's there for us to work on that's what i recommend you use don't clog it up with background with background graphics now what we did have was a lack of contrast i'm just going to go and restore this i'm going to put our color back in uh, we had a lack of contrast here between the fill color in the background and the text color that text isn't really readable. Now, at this point, I'll just flag up the accessibility report. For three or four years, I just looked at this, not even like processing what it is, but it's actually quite useful. It means accessibility. How readable is your text? And you can see there's no contrast here. This text isn't really readable. So what's a really easy rule of thumb? I do all my formattings just, just through easy rules of thumb, nothing artistic or anything. Well, if you've got a darker background color like this green, just go for white. So we've got white text on a on a darker color works pretty well. And it works well the other way. You can see you can just reverse that. So here we've got a gray background with the green text. So dark on light or light on dark, just a simple formatting idea that's worked. That's going to work well for you. Okay. What about insufficient? What about column widths generally? Well, firstly, insufficient column widths here. So we can see We've got the hashtags. That's not a data input. If I hover over the cell, Excel's actually displaying the values there. So uh, what would options be for increasing the column width? Well, you can click and hold, uh, do it manually, and we can see the numbers appearing well. But I'd recommend you have you know, a bigger idea in mind for column widths. I recommend using a base unit, a base unit, and then multiples of that unit for column widths. For example, 5, 8, 12. I think eight is going to work well here. I'm going to have eight as my base unit, and then I'm going to use that to set the column width. So I'm going to go to format, and then we're going to do column width. What's eight times two? Even I can do that, I think, without a spreadsheet. And then we go 16. Then I'm going to hit the F4 key on the Windows PC, and once more, consistent column widths here. Our buffer column, I always set the buffer columns to two or three, admittedly, not a multiple of eight, but buffer columns are a bit of an exception here. So for the gate, alt H O W, let's go eight here. And then for these columns that just have a single number in, alt H O W on the Windows PC, I'm going to take that multiple down, multiply it by half. That would give us four. And then over here, I'm going to hit F4 once. And then this look, looks like alt H O W. Uh, maybe 24 here because we've got more data developing here. So column widths, 
uniform, that idea of a base unit being repeated that gives us a sense of order and calm is going to encourage people to uh, engage with your spreadsheet consistency as well. The same with row height, it's a classic mistake. So we want to keep these consistent as well. Control shift down on the Windows PC. I'm going to work through the menus here so I can go to format and uh, row height here. I know that 15 works well. With the settings I've got, with the font size, 15 works well. And I recommend you don't use a row height that would make the lines challenge the text. What do I mean by that? Alt H O H and then 10, for example. You can see the readability for me is slightly diminished. Maybe it's a matter of, of opinion. Let me know in the comments. I'd like a little more room there. Alt H O H uh, 15 is going to work well. And suddenly we've got those consistent row heights. And I'm feeling much more inclined to engage uh, with this data. What about the fonts? OK, now we've got Comment Sans here. I'm a child of the 90s. I love comics, Comic Sans, but let's have a consistent font and let's not have Calibri. It's very likely Calibri is the default font on your system. So just it's a great way to show that you've put some thought into the into the spreadsheet just by using a different font. So what I recommend Arial looks professional is going to yeah encourage people to engage uh, with the data. So and you can change the default font in your Excel settings uh, if, if you want to do that. What about using bold? I recommend using bold selectively uh, as an alternative to using uh, some shading or some alternative formats. And it really depends what you're interested in. Interested in. Remember, the only purpose of formatting is to help your user or you understand the data better. What's your user interested in? If you're interested in total goals, why not uh, format that uh, in bold? And then I also like the, uh, like the idea of using uppercase. I often use uppercase for headers. So let's suppose we wanted to quickly convert these headers to uppercase. Uh, we could use the upper formula here. Just going to use the arrow to navigate down there, holding down the shift key and the right, ar and the right arrow, control R, and then control C and control Alt V and V. Just paste the values in there. I really like using the uppercase uh, for the headers there and then control B and control I, that bold and italicized look, that works really well for me uh, for row headers. And also note, we've got a different row height for the row headers to make them stand out a little bit more. And we've got our idea of a base unit being multiplied. 15 was the row height multiplied by two to make 30. What about grouping columns together? So what's the function of this text up here? Well, it's to group the, co the, the columns together. So because I've said goal times at the top here, I don't need to say goal time one, goal time two, goal time three, goal time four. So we've massively economized on the text uh, in the spreadsheet. Again, that's going to make it easier for the user if, if they just have to read less. So how to do that? Well, I'm just going to copy it across, control C uh, and control V here. We've got our fixture information in there. And we've managed to group some columns together so the user can just look across the spreadsheet and see goal times. And they might think, well, I'm not interested in goal times. I can just carry on. So the formatting is helping the user interpret uh, the data. So that gives us a sense of column and a sense of grouping. So what about it? Uh, we've got to a much better formatted spreadsheet. Uh, I'm going to go Alt um, WVG here uh, just to switch off the grid lines. And then I'm going to go control shift right, control shift down, alt H B A uh, to add those borders on. And that to me is not bad at all. Um, you know that I like just having the top and the bottom border, not the left and right. But this has basic professional formatting and your users. It's certainly not going to be a problem, is it? Engaging with this spreadsheet. All of the keyboard shortcuts that I've used, we've got a whole video on that. You can see that video in the card. And in the video description, we've also got our Make Excel Beautiful playlist. That's in the pinned comment below this video. I'll see you there.